Uh, one of my favorite shows of all time is HBO's Silicon Valley. Uh, drop into the chat or into the Slack if you love Silicon Valley. I mean, it really covers a broad uh, swath of information about technical companies doing solutions and even some of the, the concepts inside. There was even an episode that focused a little bit on AI where one of the people from the house, uh, all these guys live in a, an incubator house where they're just trying to build companies and and take over Silicon Valley, basically. And one of the people in the house, they wanted to build this application that was a food categorizer. So you would take a picture of the food and it would say, hey, what is this food? And so they were trying to get ready for this big pitch to get an investment. And they had been working on it and working on it. And so the big moment to test it out there in the kitchen of the house. So Jin Yang, who's the, uh, the inventor of this application, he uh, took a picture of a hot dog and then lo and behold, boom, hot dog. And everyone went absolutely crazy, loving it, slapping high fives. They thought they were going to be rich. And then they're like, all right, now do pizza. So he took a picture of pizza and they waited for a moment. And then they said, not hot dog. And what he did was he only trained the model on the hot dog. One of the great things about that show is that it covers a lot of the different terminologies, right? Uh, they even talk about being an early adopter. Early adopter is someone who tries or even evangelizes technology very early on in its nascency. And so when we look at something like AI, it's honestly something you would think that would be adopted by a lot of cybersecurity practitioners. But honestly, it's kind of a mixed bag. There are some people that hate it. There are some people that are indifferent. But there are also those that really love it. And what I'm going to talk about today in this quick lightning talk is how are you going to use this AI to supercharge your career? How do you get ahead of the rest? Uh, again, my name is Chris Cochran, co-founder of Hacker Valley Media. Uh, we do live streams, podcasts, all sorts of things for cybersecurity brands. I spent about 15 or so years in cybersecurity, and I'm also the uh, advisory CISO for a company called Huntress, which is focused on MDR for small and medium-sized businesses. When we talk about being an early adopter, it's really about trying new technology. And with AI, of course, it's been around for a while, but it's had such an explosion over the last year even uh, that has really taken everything by storm. So how do you utilize AI to propel your career, propel your learning, propel your impact to cybersecurity? I'm going to give you two things. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience with AI, but I'm also going to put it into the context of a framework that I created during COVID called Exist. And Exist is all about learning and immersing yourself into a new world. It could be a new role in cybersecurity. It could be a new role in law. It could be a hobby. It could be a sport. It's really about acclimating yourself to something relatively new. Uh, it's an acronym, EXIST. Uh, the EX is explore, the I is immerse, the S is study, and the T is translate or transform. So when we talk about exploration, what does that really mean? When we're talking about, hey, I'm getting into cybersecurity for the first time, what are some of the roles that people fulfill in this realm? You could literally create a chat GPT prompt and say, hey, provide me an overview of all the roles in cybersecurity, or even the most important roles? What are some of the most desired roles in cybersecurity in 2023, right? If you're using a model that's attached to, or uh, attached to the internet. These are some of the things that you could do to explore the differences within this realm. And you could even take it a step further in that exploration. Maybe you're really interested in security operations, but you wanna go deeper into incident response, threat intelligence, which is my huge background. Uh, maybe you wanna look at something like compliance but allow that AI to give you that exposure to many things, right? It's really good for exposing people to new concepts and uh, new paradigms within cybersecurity. So that exploration is all about looking out into the world and seeing what's out there. The reason why I originally created it, uh, this framework is because people were trapped inside their houses. And when people were trapped inside their houses during COVID, they felt like there wasn't a lot for them to do. They were bored. Uh, they felt like, oh, I can't experience life trapped inside my house. But when you look at something like it exists, it's all about how do I explore things within my realm, right? Or even a little bit beyond my realm. So if you were to be trapped inside your house again, uh, maybe you could write a book or maybe you could learn something about neuroscience. 
Or maybe you could do a deep dive on AI or incident response or even purple teaming. Explore all those things and there's going to be something that just kind of grabs your attention. It might be something that's interesting. It might be something that's frightening. It might be something that just gets you out of bed and makes you want to explore a little bit more. And that's when we get to immersion. Immersion is all about surrounding yourself with the ideas, the imagery, the concepts of whatever it is that you're trying to do. So if you're wanting to do something like incident response, you want to surround yourself with incident responders. You want to join the groups. You want to talk to the people that are in that realm. You want to surround yourself with the SANS posters that they create that has a lot of information that just shows some of the big concepts within a given field within cybersecurity. One of the things you could do from an immersion standpoint is uh, what they call the five books of stupid. Now I'm going to understand, I'm going to explain why it might not be the best framework for something like AI, but I'm going to still give it to you because I think it's something important, whether you're using it for AI, whether you're using it for cybersecurity. So the five books of stupid is Stephen Kotler's uh, framework. He used to use it as uh, a framework to learn something really quickly. Uh, if he wanted to learn about something in neuroscience, he would get five different books. And these five books are as follows. The first one is like a domain bestseller. This is the best book in incident response, threat intelligence, threat hunting. It's, and it's all about fun. It's not necessarily about writing down all of the, the names or the concepts. It's about writing down what is the most interesting to you. The next book is going to be about the pop science. This is also a fun book, but more technical than that domain bestseller. Book three is more technical. Uh, you're starting to learn a little bit more about the nuances of this particular world. The fourth book is your most technical book, and that's going to be like a textbook, right? This is going to really go through a lot of the nuances of this field, whether it's AI or what have you. And then that final one is this macroscopic or future-based book, all, all about the future problems of this particular world. Now, the reason why I say it might not be the best fit for AI in, in general, because AI is changing so fast. I found myself in a book store and I was looking at books and I, I found myself wanting to check the date just to understand how old is this book? Now, if I'm looking at a book even from last year, it might not have all of the up-to-date information for AI as it stands today because things are changing so quickly. So what could you replace with books? Uh, what could you uh, stand in for books? It could be podcasts. It could be uh, YouTube channels. It could be anything that is quickly updating and changing. And maybe it could even be a, a Twitter feed uh, that you're looking at for that additional information. Now that you've immersed yourself, now it's time to meet the uh, rubber and road to get things done. Studying is all about that practical ap application, whether it's studying to understand and learn, or maybe it's even uh, doing some hands-on keyboard things, whether you're talking about doing uh, work for AI in general, so figuring out how do you do prompts correctly, or maybe it's your, how do I build my own uh, structure. So this is one of my favorite applications for ChatGPT. Be sure to write this down. If you are doing something like, hey, I want a strategy for creating a learning path for the next one month, two months, six months on something specific, let's say it's threat intelligence. You could go to something like ChatGPT or you could go to Bard and say, hey, I would like you to help me create a structure in which to study and practice threat intelligence in the cloud, threat intelligence as a producer, and even as a consumer. You could say, hey, I want to do all of these things, but before you write that structure, before you give me that strategy, ask me 10 additional questions that will give you additional context about me and my preferred learning style. That way, it's going to ask you all those questions. You copy those questions, maybe put it into a document. You're going to re, uh, replace those questions with your answer. And it's going to help you give a much more granular and targeted and personal strategy for learning whatever that field is. Uh, once you understand that, okay, I'm starting to get the hang of this, right? I've explored, I'm interested in this particular standpoint in cybersecurity. Now I've immersed myself, I'm surrounding myself with the folks that are doing this stuff uh, based on what I got from ChatGPT or anything else. Also, now you have an entire study program that you've built specifically for yourself in the way that you learn and then also how it can apply 
to your role in, in cybersecurity. And finally, what you want to do is you want to translate or transform the field, your community, yourself, based on that information. That's what the T is, translate or transform. If you wanted to say, teach children about something that you learned in threat intelligence, how would you explain that? Maybe you're not as practiced in being a, a, an orator or a speaker in front of children. You could use something like a chat GPT for translation. Give me a, how do you explain ransomware to a five-year-old? And it'll help distill that information in a very, very general and basic way so that you can communicate all the things that you've learned over time. There's so many ways that you could use Translate or Transform. Translate uh, by way of explaining things to your peers, right? In a lightning talk, maybe you're teaching the board or maybe you're teaching your superiors about something that you're doing for a project, a project that you want to do, or maybe a project that you've completed and you're trying to explain the impact for the organization. Uh, also transform, whether it's transforming yourself, right? Going into that next role, maybe you just got your role as a security analyst, but now you're trying to move into a security architecture role, right? What are the things that you needed to do to get there? Uh, maybe you're trying to transform your organization, right? Maybe you're using AI, maybe you're bringing in purple teaming. How do you use all of that information to transform your org to be better? Maybe you're looking for uh, policies that you could use to enable yourself to use something like ChatGPT in your organization. But leveraging AI, using something like Exist to really propel you forward is going to be a, an absolute game changer for you and your career. Uh, people are afraid about AI taking folks' jobs. And I heard something that really rung true, at least to me, is that AI isn't coming to take your job, but someone with AI is. So use every single resource at your disposal to bring that, uh, that that operational excellence up a level, to bring your performance up a level, but don't just keep it for yourself. Be sure to share it with everyone else in your community, in the, the field of cybersecurity, and the rest of the world. And with that, I'm going to kick it over to Stacy. Thanks, everybody. Be sure to, I'll drop some stuff into the chat. And uh, yeah, be sure to reach out on LinkedIn. I love to connect with everybody.